What's up, everybody, and welcome back to OpenStax Algebra and Trigonometry, Chapter 11, Section 1, Systems of Linear Equations with Two Variables. Let's do it. Can a system of linear equations have exactly two solutions? Explain why or why not. So I would say no, and I'm going to show you why. A system of linear equations, aka lines, are literally two lines. So I'm going to give you the three different possibilities for what we could have. First, we could have two lines that are parallel, and the solution of the lines is where they intersect. So if they're, inter if they don't, if they're parallel, they never intersect. So this would be a no solution situation. The second one is they simply have different slopes. It doesn't matter if they're perpendicular, or if they're different by a little bit or a lot, but as long as they have different slopes, they're going to intersect and they're going to intersect at one point. So this is a one solution situation. So here they have zero real solutions. Here they have one real solution. And then there's one more option. So imagine this is the first line. The second line is right on top of it. Now, really what that means is the two lines are, are identical, right? But um, if their two lines are identical, we would say they're right on top of each other. And in this case, they have infinite solutions. So you can have zero, one, or infinite. You cannot have exactly two. So that's why I would say no, boom, done. If you're solving a break-even analysis and get a negative break-even point, explain what this signifies for the company. So what they're talking about for break-even analysis is they're like, hey, uh, we, we represent the amount of money we make as 7x plus 49. Okay. So this might be an equation of like, this is like what represents our revenue. Now, if we're talking about break even, this is when this equals zero. So this is a case such that if we solve for X, we'd subtract 49 from both sides and then we divide by seven and we get X equals negative seven. So that means we need to sell negative seven units to break even. So what does that mean? Like, is there such a thing as selling negative seven units? Not really, if we're, if we're really thinking realistically, but what this means is that in this bizarre scenario, which is not very realistic, but in this scenario, we're at we're right away going to be profitable. So there's not really a real break-even point. We're profitable from the start. Now, if I were to think of like an example of a situation that would make sense like this, it would be like you get a cash infusion of forty nine dollars, and you've got no other costs. And every time you sell like some product or a digital product or whatever, you're making seven dollars a pop. That means if you make nothing, you're already net positive. So you're really Realistically, you're not going to have to even think about breaking even. You're already starting in the positive. So that's how I would explain it. Boom, done. Given a system of equations, explain at least two different methods of solving that system. So I'm going to give you three different methods. And the first one is called substitution. The second one, they're, they're calling in the back of the book addition. I also call it elimination, but I'll write addition slash elimination. And the third one is by graphing. So as you might have seen, if you look back and saw my answer to question one, graphing is where you simply graph the two lines and the solution is the coordinate of the intersection point. So if they intersect at two comma seven, that's my solution. X equal, when X equals two, Y equals seven, and that's the case for both of these. So that's where they kind of intersect. When we're talking about substitution, what you would do is you would say, all right, if I know one of my equations is Y equals three X minus four, my other one is Y equals two X plus seven. What I'm gonna do to substitute is I know that Y equals three X minus four in the first equation, and I'm trying to see when the two are equal. So if I know that Y equals this, I can replace this y with that same quantity because if we're looking at the intersection point or the solution x and y are equivalent in both equations so that's a that's a fair substitution the last step would or the last option would be elimination now if we come back to the same example the way addition or elimination works and that the reason why i like elimination better is because you're aiming to eliminate one of the variables but we're basically adding the two equations together in a way such that one of the variables is eliminated. Now, since if I added these together, it wouldn't eliminate anything, I need to modify one or both of the equations. Well, I'm allowed to multiply an equation by anything as long as I multiply every piece of it by the same value. So if I multiply everything by negative one like so, now I can add these together. The y's cancel out to zero. 3x plus negative 2x is x. Negative four plus negative seven is negative 11. Add that to the other side and we get a solution of x equals 11. Now to solve for y, you just plug it back in. And y would be 30, uh, three times 11, which is 33 minus four is 29. So that would be the three different ways that you could solve this system. Boom, done. 
So for this one, we're meant to determine whether or not this is a solution to both of these equations. Now, one thing we could do is we could solve this, right, like a typical system, but since they give us a particular coordinate, we can also check it another way, which I think is gonna be faster, and that's by plug and chug. So I'm gonna plug it into both equations, and if we indeed get a true statement for both, then it is a system. If we get it for neither or only one, then it is not a solution to the system. So let's plug and chug here. So we'd have negative three, plug in negative six for x times negative six minus five times plugging in one for y. Does that equal 13? This would give me 18. This would give me minus five, which does indeed equal 13. So that is the first check. Now the bottom one, plug in negative six for your x. So that's negative negative six, which is six plus four times positive one. And does that equal 10? Yes, it does. Six plus four is equal 10. So checked as well, which means yes, this is a solution to the system. Done. So for this question, we're gonna to check to see if this coordinate is a solution to the system, meaning both equations. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug and chug and see if we get a true statement for one, both, or neither. So we're gonna plug in negative one times negative two is two, plus five times the y value, right? This is the x and y, so five times one is five. Does that indeed equal seven? Yes, it does. What about down here? Two times negative one is negative two, plus nine times positive one, which is nine, does that equal to seven? Yes, it does. Negative two plus nine does indeed equal seven. That's a true statement, which means yes, this is a solution, done. So for this one, we're meant to solve by substitution. Now, before we can continue with substitution, I need to choose one of the equations and isolate one of the variables. And I'm always choosing the path of least resistance, meaning the easiest, right? Well, what's easiest to isolate in the top equation? X, nice and easy, right? So I'm gonna subtract 3y from both sides, I get x equals 5 minus 3y. Then I'm going to take this, which equals x, so if it equals x, well, I can plug it into x here. So now I have 2 times, instead of x, I'm going to substitute in 5 minus 3y, and then we have plus 3y equal to 4. Now I'm going to distribute and combine like terms, so I got 10 minus 6y, right, multiplying both by 2 plus that 3y equals 4, combined like terms, negative 6y plus 3y is negative 3y equals 4, then I'm going to isolate, I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides like so, and I got negative 3y equals negative 6, divide by negative 3, y equals 2, that's my y value to the solution, we need to find the corresponding x value, so I'm going to plug it into either, I think it's easier to plug it into this equation right here, so let's do that, x equals 5 minus 3 times instead of y we put in 2, 3 times 2 is 6, 5 minus 6 is negative 1. So our solution is x equals negative 1, y equals 2, which in coordinate format will be negative 1 comma 2, that's how you do it, boom, done. For this one, since we're doing it by substitution, we need to isolate one of the variables. And again, I want to choose the path of least resistance. I like this second equation, because watch this. When I minus 9y from both sides, I get 3x equals negative 9y. Then I can divide both sides by 3, and I get x equals negative 3y. That's pretty quick and easy. And then now, since I know this equals x, I'm going to go to the other equation and replace x with negative 3y. So now I have 4 times negative 3y plus 2y equals negative 10. So I'm going to multiply, that's a negative 12y plus 2y equals negative 10. Negative 12 plus 2 is negative 10y equals negative 10. Divide by negative 10, and of course we get y is equal to 1. Now to find my corresponding x value, let's plug it in right here, right? Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, so x equals negative 3, which means our final coordinate solution is negative 3 comma 1. Boom. Done. For this one, since we're using substitution, I'm gonna choose whichever equation I think is gonna be easiest to simplify. I feel like this one is gonna be money. So what I'm gonna do is, again, I'm gonna isolate one of the variables. I think it makes the most sense to isolate x. So I'm gonna say negative 3x equals, I'm gonna add 6y to both sides, 6y plus 1.8. Again, this is arbitrary. I could've isolated y. I could've isolated one of the variables here too. But like I said, this is gonna be, in my opinion, the easiest. Because now I can divide everything by negative three, and I got six divided by negative three is negative two y, 1.8 divided by negative three is negative 0.6, right? Just like 18 divided by three is six, 1.8 divided by three is 0.6. So now I have this nice expression for x. So now going back to the first equation, let's plug and chug this in for x like so. So now I got negative two times instead of x, I'm gonna plug in negative two y minus 0.6, and then I got the plus three y all equal to 1.2. Now let's distribute, distribute. Negative two times negative two is four y, negative two times negative 0.6 
is positive 1.2, and then we have plus 3y equals 1.2. Now we got 4y plus 3y, which is 7y. And look at this 1.2 and 1.2. That's pretty cool because when I, I know when I'm going to subtract 1.2 from both sides, I know I'm going to get 0. So I'm going to just jump ahead to that. 7 times what is 0? 7 times 0 is 0, which means y equals 0. Awesome. Now let's plug 0 back in to get x. So negative 2 times 0 is 0 minus 0.6 is negative 0.6, which means my final solution is negative 0.6 comma zero, like so, boom, done. So this one's really interesting. I am going to go to the top one and I'm going to choose to isolate x here. Uh, again, it's a bit of an arbitrary decision, but let's do that. So we got three x equals, let's subtract five y from both sides, so nine minus five y. And now here's the dealio. I could completely isolate x here. And then we're going to divide both sides by 3, and we got x equals 9 divided by 3 is 3 minus 5 thirds y. Now, I'm not a huge fan of having a fraction here, but it is what it is. Like, honestly, this would be easier to solve with the addition slash elimination method, but we got to do substitution per the instructions. So let's keep it going. Now, we can take this and plug it in for x down here. So now we have 30 times 3 minus 5 thirds y plus 50y equals negative 90. All right, now let's distribute, distribute. 3 times 30 is 90. 30 times 5 thirds, negative, but the main idea is we're dividing by that denominator. 30 divided by 3 is 10. Then we multiply by the numerator, that's 50. So we get minus 50y. And then we have plus 50y equal to negative 90. Now, this is very interesting because negative 50y plus 50y, that's going to go to zero. And then we have 90 equal to negative 90. But is that a true statement? That is not a true statement. Those are not equal. So the interesting thing is when you use substitution or elimination and you come to a point where you get a nonsensical equation, we know that this is a no solution situation, meaning that these two lines are likely parallel. Now, if you put them both into slope intercept, you'll see that they both have a slope of negative three fifths but they have different y-intercepts. This one is gonna be nine-fifths. This one is gonna be negative nine-fifths. So you can see that if you put it into slope-intercept form. So again, that's not more verification that there shouldn't be a solution, but that's the answer, no solution, boom, done. So for this one to use substitution, I'm gonna choose the top equation. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first, I don't like all these fractions, right? And, and let's say we're choosing to isolate, mm, let's just pick y. I wanna multiply everything by three. And that's gonna be nice because that's gonna get a nice one y. So let's distribute that three. We get three halves x plus y equals three times 16 is 48. Okay, so now we got a nicer situation. Let's isolate y by subtracting uh, three halves x from both sides. So we got y equals 48 minus three halves x. Now we got this awesome thing and we can plug it in over here for y. So now I have one sixth x plus one fourth times 48 minus three halves x. I know this looks crazy, but I'm going to show you a way to make it a lot easier in a second. Equals nine. Now, I don't like the one six. I don't like the one fourth. Fractions make it more complicated, but we can use a nice strategy called clearing the fractions. And how can I do that? Well, I'm not worried about the three halves just yet, but let's get rid of the, the one six and the one fourth. Well, what's the least common multiple of six and four? It's 12. So watch what happens when I multiply everything by 12. It's pretty cool. 12 times 1 sixth. Again, we multiply by the numerator, divide by the denominator. That gives us 2x. 12 times 1 fourth. Multiply by 1, divide by 4. That's 3. Or you can do it in the other order if that's, if that's easier, right? Uh, we don't multiply the inside because I've already multiplied one component of this entire piece. So we don't, if, we, if you multiply the insides, then you're doing it twice. We don't want to do that. So then we have 48 minus 3 over 2x equals, and then 12 times 9 is 108. Now let's distribute the 3, and we got 2x plus 3 times 48 is 120 plus 24 is 144, minus 3 times 3 is 9 halves x equal to 108. By the way, now if you want to clear this fraction, just multiply everything by 2. It makes it easier, right? Then we got 4x plus 288 minus 9 halves times 2 is just 9 equal to 216. Okay, now we're going to combine like terms, and that's going to be negative 5x. Okay, let's make a little room here. I'm going to simultaneously subtract 288 from both sides. 
216 minus 288, that should be, I believe, negative 672, excuse me. And then to isolate, we divide both sides by negative five, the negatives are gonna cancel out, we get 72 fifths for x. Now we can take this, plug it in over here for y, okay? So I know we're pretty low on room, let's do it up here, y equals 48 minus three halves times, and then we're plugging that in for x, 72 over five. Just making a little room there, now let's distribute y equals 48 minus, and then uh, we can cross simplify two and 72 divide by two, we get one and 36. So now we get three times 36, which is 108 over five. Okay, to simplify, let's get a common denominator, multiply this by five over five. So that's 240, 240 over five. 240 now minus 108 is, what is that, 132, right? 132 over five. So now we have y equals this, x equals this, and in coordinate form, it's gonna be 72 fifths, comma, what did we say, 132 over five, like so. So here is your final solution, boom, done. So for this one, we're gonna solve by addition. Again, the other name for that is elimination. So what we're trying to do here is our first objective is to choose one of the variables and get them to have the same coefficient but opposite signs, okay? So let's go with the y's, let's eliminate those. So if I multiply the top equation by two and I multiply the bottom one by negative five, they're both gonna be negative 10 for the, or but one's gonna be 10, one's gonna be negative 10 for the coefficients. That's what we want, opposites, but same number. So we multiply this one by two, we get negative four x plus 10 y equals negative 84. This one multiplied by negative five, we get negative 35 x minus 10 y equals negative 150. Now you may be like, well, what if I multiply this by negative two, that by five, we'll still get the correct answer. So either way, and now we can add these together. These are opposites, so they're gonna cancel. Negative four plus negative 35 is negative 39 x equals 80 plus, uh, 84 plus 150 is negative 234. Now we're going to divide both sides by negative 39 and look at that. It goes in exactly six times. So x equals six. Now to solve for y, we can plug it back into either, either of these equations and isolate. So I plug in six. Let's do the top one. Six times negative two is negative 12 plus five y equals negative 42. Then we're gonna add 12 to both sides, five y equals negative 30, divide by five y equals negative six, which means our solution is six comma negative six, that's how you do it, done. So for this one, we're trying to match up one of the variables. I'm gonna choose the match up the y's because it, to do that, I don't need to modify the bottom one. I can just multiply the top one by negative six. And that's what we want. We're gonna get an opposite six y versus a negative six y. So let's distribute that. We get negative 30 x plus six y equals negative six times 2.6, negative 2.6, excuse me, which is 12 plus 3 point, 15.6. And then the second equation stays as is. Now we're gonna add it together. Those are gonna cancel out. Negative 30 plus negative four is negative 34 X equals 15.6 plus 1.4 is 17. Divide by negative 34, 17 since it's half of 34, this is negative one half. So that's nice and simplified. Now let's plug and chug to solve for y. Let's just use the second equation or again arbitrarily, but it is actually easier tool because this will give me a fraction. Negative four times negative one half won't. Negative four times negative one half is two. So I'm plugging it in there. Minus six y equals 1.4. Then we're going to subtract two from both sides. We get negative six y equals 1.4 minus two is negative 0.6. Last but not least, we're going to divide by negative six, divide by negative six. The negatives will cancel out here. 0.6 over six is the same as one over 10, aka one tenth. So my final answer is negative one half comma one tenth. Boom, done. So here via elimination, I'm gonna actually choose to eliminate x because it's nice and opposite there. And so I'm gonna multiply the top equation by five, right? Cause then I'll have negative five x, positive five x. So as I distribute that, I get negative five x plus 10 y equals negative five, right? Five times each of those pieces. And then the second equation stays as is. All right, now we have an addition situation. Well, notice the x's are gonna cancel out, but 10 y plus negative 10 y also cancels out. So we just have zero on the left-hand side, negative five plus six on the other side is one. 
this is an interesting situation because we've combined by addition and we get something that is not true. This zero obviously does not equal one. When you get a situation like this, this is a no solution situation, okay? Now, just to throw this out there, if you had gotten one equals one or zero equals zero, which is always true, this would be an, all, an infinite solutions situation. But since it was zero equals one, this is no solution, boom, done. So right off the bat, this one just looks like a mess for elimination with all these fractions. So I like to start by clearing the fractions and, and then we can talk about elimination. So I wanna clear this fraction by multiplying the by the LCM of four and six, which is 12. And for this one on the bottom, I'm gonna multiply by the LCM of eight, two, and 120, which is 120. So let's see what we get. 12 times five, six, that's 12 divided by six, which is two times five, which is 10. 12 times one fourth, that's three. And then 12 times zero is zero. 120 times one eighth, that's 120 divided by eight, which is 15 X. Obviously one half of 120 is 60. And then we have 120 times negative 43, 120. It's the 120s cancel out and we're left with negative 43. Now we have a much easier situation, right? Like you can now probably tell it's easy to match up the Y coefficients as 60 and negative 60. So I'll multiply this by 20 and as we distribute to everything we got 200 x plus 60 y equals 20 times 0 which is 0 now as we add it together these cancel out 15 plus 200 is 215 x equal to negative 43. Last but not least, divide by 215, divide by 215. And this is interesting because negative 43 is actually exactly one fifth of 215. So as we divide the top and bottom by 43, we see that X equals negative one fifth. Now we're gonna plug and chug and try and solve for Y. I'm actually gonna use this equation. I think it's gonna be pretty easy because negative one fifth in for X, you multiply by 10, that's negative two. So we get negative two plus three Y equals zero. Then I'm gonna add two to both sides. Three Y equals two, divide by three Y equals two thirds. So there's my answer. In coordinate form is negative one half comma two thirds. That's how we do it, done. So for this one, I am going to match up the X's. I think that's gonna be the easiest. So I know that five times 0.2 is one. So that's gonna be great because that's gonna give me negative one X, right? So that's the opposite of that X. Five times 0.4, that's actually positive two Y. And then five times 0.6, that's actually three. But this is very interesting because when I add these together, the X's cancel out, the Y's cancel out giving me zero, and then negative three plus three is zero. And this is a true situation. This is a true equation. Zero does equal zero. So when I get a nice equation like this where the variables cancel out and I get a nice true equation, this means that we have an infinite solutions situation. It's another way of saying these are the same lines and they intersect at infinite points. Now the way that they state it in the back of the book is in terms of X, meaning there's sort of like a relationship between every X and Y. And since these are the same equations, what we can do to figure out what that is, is basically just isolate Y. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first add two Y to both sides. So I got X equals from this equation, two Y minus three. Then I'm gonna add three. So we got X plus three equals two Y. Divide by two, divide by two. And we get Y equals X plus three over two. Now this is pretty cool because that means whenever uh, X is X, right? The Y value is gonna be x plus three divided by two. So this kind of contains all of the infinite solutions, right? For example, if x is five, right, y would be five plus three divided by two, which is four, that's one solution. If x is, let's say nine, right? If x is nine, y would be nine plus three, which is 12 divided by two is six, and so on and so forth. So a lot of books will say infinite solutions. This one wants you to give that exact relationship for all the solutions. That's how you do it, done. So for this one, we can use any method we want. I'm actually gonna use substitution because this one's gonna be easy to isolate X. So that's kind of the decision-making process. Both will work in any situation, but we're trying to choose the path of least resistance. So I'm gonna isolate X by subtracting two Y from both sides. Then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna plug it into the top equation for X. So then I got five and instead of X, I got four minus two Y plus 9y equals 16. Then we're going to distribute, distribute 20 minus 10y plus 9y equals 16. Uh, negative 10y and 9y is negative y. 20 minus y equals 16. Then we minus 20 minus 20. 
and we get negative y equals negative 4. Last but not least, multiply both sides by negative 1, boom, boom, and we get y equals 4. So that's the first solution. Then I'm going to take this and plug it in here to get x. So x equals 4 minus 2 times, again, we got 4 for y like so. Four, and then negative 2 times 4 is 8, or negative 8. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. So there's our solutions. And uh, written as a coordinate is negative 4, comma, 4. Boom. Done. For this one, I'm going to use elimination, a.k.a. addition. And the reason why is because I feel like it's going to be very easy to get this to be a positive 4y, right? We want those to be the same coefficient but opposite signs. And look, I could use elimination, but it feels like a hassle because we're going to end up with fractions. I don't want that, right? Path of least resistance. So we're going to multiply the top one by negative 2, and we get negative 10x plus 4y, and then negative 2 times 2.5 is negative 4.5. Now as we add it together, 7x plus negative 10x is negative 3x. The y's cancel out, and then we have negative 1.5. Divide by negative 3, negative 1.5 divided by negative 3 is exactly 1 half. Now we're going to plug it into, let's do the bottom equation just arbitrarily. So we're going to plug that x in, 7 times 1 half minus 4y equals 3. 7 times 1 half is 3.5 minus 4y equals 3 minus 3.5 from both sides, like so, boom, boom. And we get negative 4y equals negative, let's say 0.5 or negative 1 half, either way. And then we divide by negative 4. Negative 1 half divided by negative 4 is like negative 1 half times negative 1 fourth, which is 1 eighth. So our final solution is the coordinate 1 half comma 1 eighth, boom, done. So this one's an amazing case because I'm definitely doing the addition slash elimination method because look at those y's. They're so perfect. We don't have to change anything. Just add it together. 7x plus 2x is 9x. Negative 4y plus 4y cancels out. That's beautiful. And then 1 third plus 7 6. Let's make 1 third into 2 6, right? Multiply by 2 over 2. And then it's easier. 2 6 plus 7 6 is 9 6. Last but not least, we're going to divide both sides by 9, a.k.a multiply by 1 ninth, cancel, cancel, and we get x equals 1 over 6. Now to find y, let's plug and chug. We'll plug it into the bottom one just randomly. So then we've got 2 times 1 sixth plus 4y equals 1 third. We're solving for y now. So 2 times 1 sixth is 1 third. 1 third plus 4y equals 1 third. But look at this. These are going to cancel out, right? If you subtract by 1 third, they go away. And then 4y equals 0 divided by 4. Y would, of course, equal 0, which means my final answer is 1 sixth comma 0. Boom. So for this one, I'm going to use elimination slash addition, but it's pretty messy, right? We got a bunch of fractions. I don't like that. And to start, let's make it a lot easier on ourselves, right? So we don't have to deal with all this stuff. I'm going to clear the fractions for both. So we're going to end up using elimination slash addition, but let's start by clearing these by multiplying by the LCM of 3 and 6, which is 6. Let's multiply by the LCM of 6 and 12, which is 12. So 6 times 7 thirds, again, the quick way to do this is divide by 3, multiply by 7, so that's 14x minus 6 times 1, 6 is just 1, equal to 12. 12 times that, divide by 6 is 2 times negative 21 is negative 42x, and then we have plus divide by 12 is 1 times 3 is 3y equals negative 36. Now it's much easier, right? Now I'm going to multiply the top by 3, and then I get, that becomes what, 42x, that becomes negative 3y, that becomes 36. But look at this, this is beautiful. We add it together, cancels out, cancels out, cancels out, what do we get? 0 equals 0. So as I mentioned in a previous problem, when you have a true equation at the end, 0 equals 0, this is an infinite solution situation because that's a true statement. So uh, there's going to be infinite solutions. Now, the cool thing about this book is it puts in the answers in terms of like x values, if you will. So there's going to be a continuous relationship in terms of what the x is going to be and what the corresponding y is going to be. And to get that, all we got to do is take one of these equations and isolate y. So let me show you what I mean. Here, I'm going to isolate y. I'm going to add y, simultaneously subtract 12. So y equals 14x minus 12. I just isolated y. Just again, added y to that side, simultaneously subtracted 12. And this is the relationship. That means anytime x is x, right, 
y is going to be 14x minus 12. This is going to be for any solution set for these two equations because they're the same equation, right? That's what it means when we have infinite solutions. The lines are right on top of each other. So one example would be if x is 1, y would be 14 times 1 minus 12, which is 2. If x is 2, y would be 2 times 14, which is 28 minus 12 is 16, et cetera, et cetera. Boom, done. So this one looks pretty tricky at the beginning with all these decimals and it doesn't seem easy to multiply to match up the terms. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 10 because let's get rid of these decimals and I can do that as long as I multiply everything. So now I have 22x plus 13y equals negative 1. On the bottom I have 42x plus 42y equals 21. So the bottom one's pretty cool because if I divide everything by 21 I get 2x plus 2y equals 1. This is fantastic. Now it's going to be easy to match these up because now I can take this one, because remember, we just modified this one. I can take this new equation and multiply it to, to get that to match up, to get the x to match up to be negative 22 by multiplying by negative 11. So watch this. Now this equation came here, and now it's going to be negative 22x minus 22y equals negative 11. And then now this equation stays as is for now. We got 22x plus 13y equal to negative 1. This is beautiful because the x's are now matched up and as opposite, same number but opposites. Those add together cancel out. Negative 22 plus 13y is negative 9y. Negative 11 plus negative 1 is negative 12. Then we divide by negative 9. We get y equals the negatives cancel out. 12 over 9 which reduces to 4 thirds. Now we can figure out what x is. So we're going to do a little plug and chug. Let's see. I'm going to choose the bottom equation because I think it's going to be easier. So we're going to plug it in here. So then we have 42x plus 42 times 4 over 3, right? Subbing it in for y is equal to 21. So this is actually not too bad to do because, again, we multiply, we divide by the denominator, multiply the, by the numerator. 42 divided by 3 is 14 times 4 is 56. So 42x plus 56 equals 21. Now I'm going to subtract 56 from both sides, and we get 42x equals, let's see, that's negative 35. And then we divide by 42. We get negative 35 over 42, and that simplifies to, you can divide top and bottom by 7, negative 5 over 6. So my final answer is, in coordinate format, negative 5, 6, x first, and then positive 4 thirds, y second. That's how you do it. Done. So for this one, we're going to state whether it, the system is consistent, inconsistent, or dependent, and whether the system has one, no, or infinite solutions. And obviously, depending on how we classify it will indicate how many solutions it has. So what we're going to do is they want us to graph it, so we're going to graph this in Desmos, and then we're going to take a look. So here are the two graphs, and you can see that they intersect at a singular point. That means that these two linear equations are consistent, okay? If they were parallel, it would be inconsistent. And if they were the same line, then it would be dependent. But they're just consistent. Actually, it's independent, but they don't ask that. So we say consistent, and we do have a solution, one solution at 0, negative 0.65. But all we got to say is consistent, one solution, boom, done. So for this one, we're going to graph it in Desmos, and we're going to check it out. So here we got two equations, and you can see that they intersect, meaning there's one solution, 9, negative 1, a.k.a. this is consistent. So we say consistent, one solution, boom, done. So for this one, we want to look at it graphically and then analyze it, so let's do that now in Desmos. So here we have the two equations graphed. Now you might say, wait a minute, I only see one line, but what you'll notice is this one is the same as that one, right? So they're right on top of each other. So when they're the same lines, this is when we say dependent, and we have an infinite number of solutions because every point on this line is a solution. Like, that's a solution. Uh, this point is a solution, 5, 5, and so on and so forth. So dependent, infinite solutions, done. So for this one, we're meant to graph it on a graphing calculator and to find the intersection, so we're going to use Desmos for that now. So this one, you can see that on Desmos, the nice thing is you just look where they intersect and you click on that point, and there's the solution. Negative 3.08 comma 4.91, that's how you do it. So for this one, we're going to graph both of these equations in Desmos and find the solution that way. So for this one, here's the point of intersection right here. And if we round it to the nearest hundredth like they did in the back of the book, it's negative 1.52 comma 2.29. That's how you do it.
So for this one, we're meant to solve the system in terms of A, B, C, D, and E, right? And this one, we only have A and B. So let's do that now. Now, we can kind of choose what we'd like to do in terms of methodology to solve this. I'm going to go with elimination at slash addition. By the way, that's usually my favorite method, but this one's especially prime for it because if I just add these two equations together, X plus X is 2X. Y plus negative Y cancels out, and then we have equal to A plus B. So now as we divide by 2, check it out, we have X equal to A plus B over 2. Now to get Y, we're going to plug and chug maybe into the first equation, doesn't matter which, but let's plug that in there and let's solve for Y. So first I'm going to subtract this quantity from both sides to isolate Y, so I have Y equal to A minus A plus B over 2. And just to simplify to get a common denominator, I'm going to make this 2a over 2. Now, when you're minusing this entire quantity, remember that negative's got to distribute to both of those pieces. So it's 2a minus a minus b all over 2. 2a minus a is, of course, a. So my y value is a minus b over 2. So in coordinate format, we got x is a plus b over 2 y is a minus b over 2. That's how you do it. Boom. Done. For this one, I'm going to use elimination slash addition method because look at these y's perfectly primed. All I have to do is multiply the top equation by negative 1, right? Negate, negate, and then 0 negated is still 0. Now we add them together. We get negative ax plus bx. Negative y plus y is 0 equal to one. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor out an X and then I have negative A plus B or another easier way to say it is B minus A equal to one. Divide both sides by B minus A and I get X is equal to one over B minus A. Now to solve for Y, let's plug and chug into either equation. I'm gonna go with the top one because it's got that zero, makes it a little easier. So I'm gonna replace the X with one over B minus A like so plus y is equal to zero. Then I'm gonna, um, let's actually let's distribute that. Multiply there, we have a over b minus a plus y is equal to zero. I'm gonna subtract this from both sides and I'm gonna get y is equal to, now I could say negative a over b minus a, but a slicker way to do this is just to throw this negative on the bottom and let it distribute because what's gonna happen is that's gonna be a negative B and a positive A, which gives us A over positive A minus B. Now we'll put it in coordinate form. We have X is one over B minus A. We have Y is A over A minus B. That's how you do it, done. All right, so for this one, we can't use elimination or addition. It's just too much, too many unknowns, right? We have six constants. So we're going to do a little substitution. This is going to be a lot of work, so bear with me. So first what we're going to do is I'm going to arbitrarily choose to isolate x, right? So I've got ax is equal to c minus by, right? I just subtracted by from both sides. Then I'm going to divide by a like so. And now I got x is equal to c minus by over a. And this is good because I can now substitute this in for x, right, in the second equation. So let's do that now. So now I have d times this plus E Y is equal to F. Now I'm going to distribute this in, boom, boom. And I got DC minus B D Y over A. And then I'm going to also put this one over A by multiplying it by A over A plus A E Y over A is equal to F. Okay. Now these have a common denominator, so I can kind of merge this. I'm going to do it right here. We can just sort of extend this out like so and that's being added and then I can just have one nice a right everything's over that nice common denominator now I'm going to multiply both sides by a and that gets rid of the denominator here and then we have a f on this side and then I want to get rid of that dc okay so I'm going to minus both sides by dc and I'm also going to rearrange these two just so I have the positive before the negative so now I have a e y minus b d y is equal to a f minus, and instead of DC, I'm going to say CD because I know that's how they have it in the back of the book. Okay, next step, I'm going to factor out the Y. Let's do that up here. So we got Y factored out of AE minus BD is equal to AF minus CD. Last step, we're going to divide by this quantity Y equals AF minus CD over AE minus BD. Okay, so there's my Y value. Now to get the X value, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the top equation and I'm gonna isolate Y 
and whatever we get there, then we're gonna plug it in and repeat the process. So I have by is equal to c minus ax, and then I'm gonna divide both sides by b like so, boom, boom, and I got y equals c minus ax over b. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and plug it in for y down here. So now we have, let's take a little room, we got d times x plus e times this quantity is equal to f. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing. We are going to distribute, distribute, and I've got dx plus ec minus aex all over b, and this is equal to f, and I'm gonna get this one to have a common denominator because I can multiply it by b over b, and then that's gonna have the same denominator, so we can kind of like extend this out. All right, cool, now I'm gonna multiply both sides by b, and I've got b d x plus e c minus a e x is equal to b f. After that, I'm gonna subtract e c from both sides, and I got b d x minus a e x is equal to b f minus, uh, sorry, what was that, e c, this is probably so crazy, and then, after this, we're gonna factor out the x. We got x is uh, times bd minus ae is equal to bf minus ec. I hope they don't give this to you a test. Last but not least, we're gonna divide both sides by this, and we've got x is equal to bf minus ec all over B, D minus A, E. So these two are very similar to the back of the book. They just kind of flipped it around, but I'll show you in Desmos that these are the correct values. So the way you can verify this is like, you can set up the two equations with the constants like I did, and then you just basically set these sliders for each of them. Now, when you see the lines, right, the solution set is this coordinate, right? That's like negative two thirds, 2.683. And then I put in the answers as I presented them uh, in the last page, right? And so it's different from the back of the book, but you can see this must be correct because it's matching up with the solutions. And then as we modify these constants, right? Like I could change this to like 0.2 or something. And you can see now the new solution set is 1.111, 1.794. That's what we get. 1.111 for the X, 1.794. So anyways, that's how you can verify and test and make sure you got the right answer. But Anyways, these are the correct solutions for X and Y, boom, done. An Ethiopian restaurant has a cost of production of C of X is equal to 11X plus 120, and a revenue function of R of X equals 5X. When does the company start to turn a profit? So here's the dealio, right? When we've got cost and we've got revenue, the way we get profit is by taking the revenue, that's the money that's coming in, minus whatever the cost is, because that's what we're spending. And the idea is, you know, if we want, we, we want to know when do we start to turn a profit, we want to know basically what's our break-even point, meaning when is the profit zero? So that's what I'm setting this equal to. And we're going to figure out that value of X because, you know, again, it doesn't say it here, but X is obviously the number of units of whatever food units or things like that. So now we got an equation, let's solve. So I'm going to distribute the negative. We got zero is equal to 5X minus 11x minus 120. We're gonna combine like terms, zero equals negative 6x minus 120. Then we're gonna add 120 to both sides like so, and then we get x equal to negative 20. All right, now this is a weird value because when this is negative, obviously that's, that's not like a real thing, right? We can't produce negative 20 units. Now if we look back at this, we look at the cost, and now the issue is that the cost is 11 times whatever our units are. And then we're also starting with this fixed cost of 120. The revenue I'm only making five. So if you wanna think about it, we're spending 11, if we're talking about meals, right? If it's a restaurant, we're spending 11 per meal and we're only making five per meal. So is it gonna turn a profit? Is there ever gonna be a point where revenue is greater than cost? No. So this means they will never turn a profit. That's your answer. Musician charges 64X plus 20,000, where X is the total number of attendees at the concert. The venue charges $80 per ticket. After how many people buy tickets does a venue break even? Uh, and at what and what is the value of the total tickets sold at that point? So what we're talking about here is when is what the musician charges, because that's what the, the venue is going to pay the musician. When is that going to equal what the venue is making, which is $80 per ticket? Again, X is the number of tickets because we're assuming like that's the total number of attendees every attendee is buying a ticket right i'm trying to figure out when these two are equal so now let's solve we're going to subtract 64x from both sides like so boom 
20,000 equals 80 minus 64 is 16 X. Then we're going to divide both sides by 16. Uh, I can do this mentally with a little trick, right? Uh, 16 is four times four. So I divide 20,000 by four, that's 5,000 divided by four. Again, that should be 1250, I believe. So 1250 equals X. So this means after 1250 tickets sold, that's when you're going to uh, break even. And then what is the value of the total tickets sold at that point? So I'm, I'm assuming the value would be based on this $80 valuation per ticket. So we do 80 times that 1250. Um, and we get, of course, all zeros here. We're going to do some little multiplication. I could do this in a calculator, but I'll do it by hand. Why not? 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 5 is 40. Carry the 4. 16 plus 4 is 20. Carry the 2. 8 plus 2 is 10. And that means the total value of the tickets sold at this point would be 100,000. That's how you do it, done. Find two numbers whose sum is 28 and whose difference is 13. So our two numbers are gonna be X and Y. And we can make equations based on these relationships because it says the sum, meaning if we add them together is, is I always like to equate to an equal sign, is 28. And then it says the difference, meaning X minus Y is equal to 13. Check this out. We got a nice system of equations. I'm going to solve by addition, AKA elimination. Cause if I add these two together, we get two X, Y plus negative Y cancels. And then 28 plus 13 is 41. Now to solve for X, we're going to divide both sides by two and 41 divided by two is 20.5. Now to find the other answer, we'll just use either equation. Maybe I'm going to use the top one just for fun. So 20.5 plus what is 28? That would be 7.5. So the two numbers are 20.5 comma 7.5 in either order. That's how you do it. Done. The startup cost for a restaurant is 120,000 and each meal costs $10 for the restaurant to make. So they're describing the cost. If each meal is then sold for $15 after how many meals does a restaurant break even? So the revenue is 15 times the number of meals. And we want to know when the revenue is equal to the cost. And the cost is $10 per meal, aka $10 times each meal, and then plus 120000 because that's that fixed cost. And now we got a nice equation. Now let's solve. So we're going to minus 10x from both sides like so. Boom, we got 5x is equal to 120,000. Then we're gonna divide both sides by five to solve. And a nice little trick mentally to divide by five, you cross off one of the zeros, AKA move the decimal over, and then you double that number. So 12,000 doubled is 24,000. So that means it's a break even point occurs after 24,000 meals are sold, boom, done. A total of 1595 first and second year college students gathered at a pep rally. The number of first years exceeded, meaning was more than the number of second years by 15. How many students from each year group were in attendance? Okay, so we'll say first and second, we're gonna represent those as X and Y, okay? So it says a total, meaning X plus Y is equal to 1595. Then it said the number of first years exceeds meaning is 15 more than the second year. So whatever the second years are, y plus 15, that would equal the first years. Uh, now we got a nice little system of equations and now we can solve. So we could use a, do elimination, but let's do substitution just for or addition as they called in the book, same thing as elimination. But we I'll, let's do substitution because they got something isolated here. So I'm gonna substitute this in for X because X equals that. So then we have Y plus 15 plus Y was equal to 1595. Then I'm gonna add the Y's together. We got two Y plus 15 equals 1595. Subtract 15 from both sides and we got two Y equals 1580. Then we divide by two and we get 790. So the number of second years is 790. Now, the first years is 15 more, AKA 790 plus 15, which is 805. So just to do a quick double check, 805, make sure when you add it to 790, you get 1595, and we do indeed. So there are your answers, done. There were 130 faculty members at a conference. If there were 18 more women, 
than men attending how many of each gender attended the conference so let's say men we can represent as x and i love making a table like this at the beginning because we can go back and be like wait a minute what was x again what was y again right so that's men is x y y is women so it says there's 130 totals so that means the men plus women is 130 and then it says there were 18 more women than men so that means if I know my women is equal to the men plus 18, right? So if there's like 10 men, there'd be 28 women, 100 men, 118 women, etc. Okay, now we got a nice little system of equations, and this is perfect for a little substitution because we got the y isolated. y equals x plus 18, so I'm going to take that and plop it in here for y. So now I have x plus, and then we'll replace the y with x plus 18 is equal to 130. x plus x is 2x plus 18 is equal to 130. I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides and we get 112. Last but not least, divide both sides by 2 and x is 56. So that means there are 56 men. Now to get women, we plug and chug this back in here. 56 plus 18, that is 74, which means there are 74 women, 56 men, boom, done. If a scientist makes 10% saline solution with 60% saline solution to get 25 gallons of 40% saline solution, how many gallons of 10% and 60% were mixed? So let's say our 10% and 60% we're going to represent as X and Y. And it's important to remember what is X and Y. X and Y is the amount of gallons of each, okay? So first of all, if that's the amount of gallons, we know we're trying to get a total of 25 gallons, which means X plus Y has to equal 25, all right? Now our second equation for a mixture problem is we can use these percentages because we can look at the amount of saline. So watch this. I can say 0 0.1, 10% of whatever X is, right? That'll give me the actual amount of saline, saline plus 60% of the gallons of Y is equal to a 40% solution of the total amount, which is X plus Y y like so and now i got a nice little equation now a couple things we can do number one i know that x plus y is already 25 so i can replace this with 25. the second thing i can do is now that i have a nice system i can use either elimination or substitution i'm going to opt for substitution even though i normally like elimination so i am going to isolate x by subtracting y from both sides 25 minus y and now i can plop this in over here and we can start to solve so i have 0.1 times 25 minus y plus 0.6 y equals 0.4 times 25 i know 4 times 25 is 100 so 0.4 times 25 is 10. now i'm going to distribute distribute and we have 2.5 minus 0.1 y plus 0.6 y is equal to 10. now i'm going to combine like terms we need more room here so i'll go up here that is negative 0.1y plus 0.6y is 0.5y, and it's 2.5 plus that. But I'm going to simultaneously subtract 2.5 from both sides. 10 minus 2.5 is 7.5. Last but not least, divide by 0.5, divide by 0.5. And y is equal to uh, 15, right? Dividing by half is like multiplying by 2. So y is 15. So we got 15 gallons of the 60%. And since I know the two add together to make 25, we must have 10 gallons of the 10%. That's how you do it. Done. An investor invested $1.1 million into two land investments. On the first investment, let's say first, uh, Swan Peak, actually let's write Swan Peak. Her return was 110% increase on the money she uh, invested. On the second investment, Riverside Community, she earned 50% over what she invested. If she earned 1 million in profits, how much did she invest in each of the land deals? So if I call this value X and I call this value Y, first what we're gonna say is, they said that the number invested X plus Y is equal to 1.1 million. Let's keep this in millions, how about that? So 1.1. The second thing is it says, we have 110% increase on the money she invested. That means she, uh, whatever she invested, she made 110% of that. So to represent the profit, because we're talking about profits over here, that's the other value we have. The profit was 1.1 times X, okay? It's 110% of that. And then for the Riverside community, Y, she made 50% of the investment. I mean, these are crazy numbers, right? If only we could make this much, 50% of Y. And then these are added together to equal 1 million. Now I got a nice system of equations. I'm gonna actually solve this with the addition slash elimination method. And I'm gonna do that by multiplying the bottom equation by negative two. So when I do that, 
I get negative 2.2x minus 1y is equal to negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Now I can add this top equation to this bottom equation. x plus negative 2.2x is negative 1.2x. The y's are going to cancel out. That's what we wanted. That's why we multiply by negative 2. Y, negative y cancel out. And then 1.1 plus negative 2 is negative 0.9. Now to solve, we're going to divide both sides by negative 1.2. x equals negative 0.9 over negative 1.2, which is like 9 over 12, which is also like 3 fourths or 0.75. And the reason why I like 0.75 is again, this is in millions. So converting it back to like regular numbers, 0.75 million is 750,000. Okay. So then since we have 750,000 here, the two together add up to 1,100,000. So I can just do a subtraction in my head, right? 1,100,000. So to get to 1 million would be 250,000. And then we add another 100,000. So that's 350,000. So there's your answer for RC. Here's your answer for SP Swan Peak. That's how you do it. If an investor invests 23000 into two bonds, one that pays 4% simple interest and the other pays 2%, and the investor earns 710 how much was invested into each account? So X can be the amount in the 4%, Y can be the amount in the 2%. So the first relationship is that the two together equal a total of 23000 And the second relationship is the interest of the, of the X, which is 0 0.04. So the interest would be 0 0.04X. And then the interest of the second, which would be at 2%, 0.02y, the interest total that is earned is equal to 710. So again, it's just about establishing relationships in equation format and then combining these somehow. So I am actually going to opt for um, elimination slash addition, right? And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to actually multiply the bottom by 100. That's going to give me 4x plus 2y equals 71,000. And since let's just choose to eliminate the y's, how about? So if this is going to be a 2y, if I multiply by negative 2, that's going to give me a negative 2y. That's going to make it easy. All right, now let's distribute. For the top one, I get negative 2x minus 2y equals negative 2 times 23,000 is negative 46,000. And then on the bottom, we have 4x plus 2y equals 71,000. And now we're going to add these together. We'll do it up here. The y's cancel out. Negative 2x plus 4x is 2x is equal to 71,000 plus negative 46,000, which would be 25,000. Divide by 2, we get x equals 12,500. So in the 4% account, we have 12,500. Since the 2 together add to 23,000, this one in y would be 10,000. 500, right? 10,500 plus 12,500, 23,000. So this is the one at 2%. This is the one at 4%. Boom, done. A store clerk sold 60 pairs of sneakers. The high top sold for $98.99 and the low top sold for $129.99. If the receipt for the two types of sales totaled this, how many of each type of sneaker were sold? So again, if I have high tops, and low tops, we'll call them X and Y. I know the total amount of high tops and low tops together is 60, so that's a sum, right? X plus Y equals 60. Now we know that low tops are, wait, let's see, high tops, sorry, are 98.99. So 98.99 times the number of high tops gives us the total revenue there, plus the price for the low tops, 129.99 times the number of low top sold, which is Y, is equal to a total of 6404.4. So since these numbers are not very friendly, right, either for a substitution or elimination with all the 0.99 and all the stuff, we're going to go with the graphing method. We're going to graph these equations in Desmos, see the intersection, and get our answer there. All right, so here are the two equations, and here's the intersection. So we'll zoom in a little bit, and boom, there it is. X is 45, Y is 15. So that means we got 45 high tops, 15 low tops. And again, see how great this table is? I remembered immediately when I saw it that X, the X value is the high tops, Y value is the low tops. So those are the two answers. Done. Admission into an amusement park for four children and two adults is 116.90. For six children and three adults, the admission is 175.35. Assuming a different price for children and adults, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is a, a, a similar a, a system of equations. So let's make a little graph here. We'll say child is X. We'll say adult 
is y and then it says for four children and two adults right so four times the price of a child plus two times the price of an adult is equal to 116.90 and then for six children and three adults we got 175.35. So the numbers aren't great, but they're not horrible because I can use some nice elimination slash addition here. Uh, and let's eliminate the y's just for fun. So I'm gonna multiply the top by negative three to get a negative six. I'll multiply the bottom by two to get a positive six y. All right, now we have negative 12x minus six y equal to, let's see if I can do this in my head, negative 348 plus 350, right? So 350.70. And then here we got two times six is 12X. Two times three Y is six Y is equal to 350.70. By the way, this supposed, one is supposed to be negative. I forgot that's negative. So it's like this. Okay. So when we add these together, what's going to happen? I was trying to cancel out the Y's, but look, the X's cancel out. The Y's cancel out and this cancels out. So we have a situation of zero equals zero. What does that tell us? That means that there are infinite solutions, which means that this breakdown doesn't provide us any information because those equations are effectively the same. Like if I knew a different combination, like if I knew how much one child and seven adults was, then I'd have enough information to really get this. But basically because there's infinite solutions with these two systems, we say that we need more info and that's how you do it done i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please click that like button if you want to see more from the scalar learning channel make sure to click subscribe thank you guys so much for joining i'll see you in the next video take it easy